<laughs> we um my first degree or my first work experience is engineering. So I really oh, yeah. enjoy the travel, going to site. No, we couldn't do anything. Every day meeting just in my in my room every day couldn't do anything yeah <laughs> yeah so the um, the COVID-19 in Australia is very very serious now we couldn't go out I couldn't to see my daughter yeah every day oh. work at home yeah so have the COVID in in your city is okay yeah yeah now it's uh it's not like a few minutes but few minutes back it's very worse condition now it's a little bit uh yeah really little better, yeah. yeah yeah when i was young getting very old when i was young i used to travel a lot i've been more yeah. than 30, 35 <laughs> rivers globally to go the, here go there now no yeah. Yeah. yeah but you're not uh, come to indonesia Yongping, you promised me soon after. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I couldn't go. I wish I could go, but I couldn't. Yeah, yeah. So, what time yeah. are we start? Uh, start? Two, uh, 2 p.m. or 5 p.m. sharp. I will start soon. Yeah, can I just go out? I just I finished, you know, today's my research group meeting. I just finished my meeting, so I just bring a cup of tea, then back. Assalamualaikum. Uh, selamat siang. Ya. Yeah. Good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. Waalaikumsalam. Yeah. We will start to uh, soon. Uh, 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 very soon. Uh, Pak. Uh, what is it? Uh, Pak Solihin. Wait. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So congratulations, Bu Ratri. We have a lot of participant today. Yeah. It. Uh, uh, more than one hundred. We we need to close uh, last night because it's uh, hit until three hundred eighty five and uh, yeah we try to reminder the participant uh, if they cannot join uh, so we can uh, to uh, eat, uh, YouTube. Okay. Uh, okay. And this is surprising because in very short time we can arrange this this event and lots of participants has been registered to. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Warm greetings from Surakarta, Indonesia. I hope you are all doing well in the midst of this challenging situation. My name is Lindang Suminar, and it is my pleasure to welcome you all to this international webinar, Socio-Hydrological Approach in Water Management, hosted by Urban and Regional Planning Program, Faculty of Engineering, Universitas 11 Maret, Surakarta, Indonesia. I would like to thank you for joining us on this Zoom meeting platform. You can also access this webinar from Fakultas Teknik UNS YouTube channel. Ladies and gentlemen, before we start, I'd like to read the program agenda and the set of rules of today's webinar. So here is the program agenda. starting with the opening. And then after this, we are going to have the welcoming speech from the head of urban and regional planning department, and also from the team of the faculty of engineering Universitas 11 Maret. And after that, we're going to have the uh, presentation session from our speakers today. Uh, and this session will be 
moderated by uh, the moderator. We have five sessions. The first session uh, will be delivered by Professor Yong Ping Wei from the University of Queensland, Australia. Good uh, afternoon, or maybe it's already evening there. Good evening, Professor Yong Ping Wei. And the second session will be delivered by Dr. Frederick Kokart. Good afternoon or good evening, Dr. Frederick. Thank you. Um, it's still late afternoon here. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> the third session will be uh, delivered by uh, BBWS Bengawan Solo that today will be represented by uh, Ibu Dr. Yudi Triada Dewi. Good afternoon, selamat siang, Ibu. Good afternoon, Ibu Lintang. Selamat, selamat siang. siang, Bu. And the fourth session will be delivered by uh, the help of Public Works, Water Resources, and Special Planning Department, Central Java Province, Indonesia, Bapak Insinyur Eko Yunianto, SP1. Selamat siang, good afternoon, Pak Eko. Selamat siang, good afternoon, Ibu. And the fifth session or the last session will be uh, delivered by Ibu Ratri Wardining Tias PhD, lecturer and also the researcher from Urban and Regional Planning Department, uh, Faculty of Engineering UNS. Selamat siang, Bu Ratri. Selamat siang. Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would also like to inform you the rules in this webinar. So please pay attention to this following instruction. The participants should change or rename the Zoom account into name underscore the institution or the affiliation. The participants should turn the microphone off or mute the audio during the program. The participants are also expected to turn the camera on if it is possible and use the virtual background that the committee already sent through the emails. The participants may submit the questions to the speakers on the link that will be shared by the committee letter. And uh, the questions about the webinar technicalities like the audio or network can be submitted on the chat feature on this Zoom meeting platform. The participants must fulfill attendance form on the link that will be shared by the committee in the end of the presentation session. And participants will receive the materials and e-certificates via email within a week after this event, only if participants completely fill the attendance form. So uh, next, I would like to welcome Professor Winnie Astuti, who is already here, the head of Urban and Regional Planning Program, to deliver the opening speech. So please, Bu Winnie. Thank you very much, Bu Lintang, for time. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Assalamualaikum. Uh, my Excellency, the Dean of the Faculty of Engineering, Universitas Basmarat, for Art and also the team of the faculty of engineering. Uh, I of course, all the keynote speakers of this webinar, uh, Professor Yong Ping Wei, good afternoon. Uh, Professor Yong Ping Wei from the School of Art and Environmental Science, University of Queensland, Australia. Dr. Frederick Brookett, sorry for my spelling. Good afternoon, uh, Prof. Uh, Good afternoon. From, from School of Earth and Environmental Science University of Queensland. Uh, the third one, uh, Dr. Insinyur uh, Agus Rujiano, uh, the representative uh, by Dr. Yudi Triana Dewi. Triana, uh, thank you for coming from the BBWSS. Uh, also, uh, Insinyur Eko Yunianto uh, from the Head of Public Works. Uh, selamat siang, Pak Eko. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> hey, thank you. And also, Puratri. Yeah. First of all, I would like to 
thanks and pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala who has been giving us the blessing which makes the international webinar has been happening very well today. And the second one, uh, of course, I would like to express my great appreciation to all the keynote speakers who would like to deliver the interesting and inspiring presentation in the topic of socio-hydrological approach in water management, also for the team of the faculty, uh, Dr. Solitin at the moderator and all the audience. Uh, thank you for coming to this uh, webinar. Uh, actually, the topic of uh, socio-hydrological approach in water management is uh, right now is very actual and also uh, challenging uh, as the access to clean water is so essential becoming the basic issue of the sustainable development goals. Uh, many, many people has been competing to get the water supply. So there are a large scale of exploitation of groundwater and also loss of uh, mafia uh, has been the big issues and uh, many more issues which trigger the uh, conflict of interest. So uh, therefore the urban and regional planning program, engineering uh, faculty UNS, uh, broadly present this webinar as we have some experts in water management. Uh, here it is who Dr. Ratri Vakitikias and also Dr. Paramita, uh, Paramita Rahayu. They are the very expert in uh, the water management. So uh, we cannot, hopefully the webinar can enrich knowledge about the social approach and also we can explore approach in managing the interaction between biophysical and social system in water management and also uh, we can discuss the prospect and challenge in socio hydrological approach to be implemented in Indonesian uh, water management. So also uh, the big thanks to uh, for the collaboration of uh, all parties uh, which is uh, uh, involved in this uh, webinar and uh, University of uh, Queensland, Australia, also the PPWS and the Pushkataru. Thank you very much for this uh, collaboration. Uh, hopefully this will be another challenging uh, collaboration in the future uh, for the development of uh, urban and regional planning uh, program as uh, plasma region. I think that's all. Uh, enjoy to follow and be active in this interesting webinar until the end of uh, this evening. Uh, thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Professor Winnie Astuti, for the opening remarks. And uh, to kick off today's agenda, I would like to welcome the Dean of Faculty of Engineering Universitas 11 Maret, Bapak Dr. Solihin Asad, to deliver the speech and formally open this webinar program. So, uh, Bapak Dr. Solihin Asad, the time is yours. Okay, uh, terima kasih, Bu Lintang. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum uh, warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, good evening, good evening. Uh, okay. everyone, uh, distinguished speakers, uh, Professor uh, Yong Ping Wei from uh, Queensland University, Australia, uh, Dr. Frederick uh, Bokert uh, from the uh, uh, from Australia, also, uh, uh, Dr. Agus Rudianto, uh, it will be represented by Dr. Yudi Triana Dewi. Uh, terima kasih, Bu Yudi, ya, selamat datang di sini, ya. Yeah. Uh, and also, Ibu Dr. Ratri Wedding Tias McLeach from Universitas 11 Maret, <coughs> Bapak Eko Yunianto, yeah, uh, from yeah, Pusdantaru, yeah, Dinas uh, Pekerjaan Umum, Pusdantaru, uh, Provinsi uh, Jawa Tengah, Indonesia. Yeah. Uh, the head of uh, program of urban and regional planning, uh, Ibu Provini Astuti, yeah, and also the professor, the lecturer, the students, and uh, all participants 
in our webinar uh, this afternoon. So, my name is Solihin Asa, the Dean of Faculty of Engineering, Universitas 11 Maret, Indonesia. I'm so delighted to welcome you all to this uh, excellent webinar, international webinar, with the theme of the socio-hydrological uh, approach in water management. Thank you for joining. Uh, this is also uh, a, a new uh, terminology for me. Yeah? Uh, yesterday, I met uh, Dr. Atri, that's what is uh, socio-hydrological? So uh, she said that, okay, tomorrow, uh, you will understand what is the social hydrological yeah ladies and gentlemen so water is not uh, a solely a technical matter but it can be seen in various perspective yeah it can be technical economics uh, human social uh, cultural uh, politics and many more so, so uh, as we know that so water is our basic needs for as a human being water uh, is a basic need for all of us in in our planets. No one can live without water. So it's our task to uh, and our obligation to uh, manage and to preserve uh, the water for our living, for our planet, for our community, for our family and for ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, for our sustainability, uh, sustainable living, there are no other choices that we have to understand the character of the water around us understand our uh, environment, understand our, uh, the character of human being uh, or the community who, cons who consumes the, the water. Here in Java Island, yeah, for example, the located where our campus in 11 Maret located, uh, it's about in one island of Java, there's about 140, uh, even 150 million people yeah, are living. Yeah? And just not far from our campus, our campus in 11 Maret, there is a, a Bengawan Solo River. It's a very long uh, river in, uh, in Jawa Island. It's a very important uh, river uh, with a one, 600 kilometers long. Yeah? And uh, as long as I know, at least about 20 or 40 million people uh, have a close connection with this uh, this river, or I would say they depend on this 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 river. That's why that's why we have to yeah, manage well this uh, uh, this uh, river, the uh, Bawan Solo. Bawan Solo is one of our big uh, our big assets, yeah? and we have to uh, manage it. Not not to mention other river uh, like uh, uh, some river in uh, West Java, for example. So we have to uh, preserve our uh, water resources and our water, our, uh, water uh, assets. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, as, we, uh, mention, as I mentioned that we have to manage the, our, uh, our water resources, uh, the, the water distribution also, water allocation, water supply. And uh, this must be uh, organized well must be organized wisely, precisely, scientifically. Otherwise, it will be a catastrophe for us. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, therefore, this international business is very important. Uh, the discussion among us, the stakeholders from different, back, different background, uh, as we're doing now, is very important. Coordination among us, the stakeholder, the regulator, the users, is very critical so that uh, we may go on and manage our uh, water effectively. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, for our webinar today, I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to all the speakers. Thank you very much uh, from, for Dr. Professor Yong Feng Wei, far away from Australia. She is deputy of head of School of Earth and Environment, uh, Environmental Science, University of Queensland, Australia. Uh, the second is a uh, doctor, uh, Frederick Bohair. He is an international consultant uh, for river basin management. And the third, uh, Bapak Dr. Insinyur Agus Rudianto. Right now, he is represented by uh, Dr. Yudi Triana Dewi. Agus uh, is the, the head of the Wan Solo River, the authority in Indonesia. And the fourth, for Bapak Ag uh, Eko Yunianto, yeah? uh, head of public works, uh, water resources, and 
Spatial Planning Department Dinas Pusdataru uh, Provinsi Central Java Indonesia. Ibu Dr. Uh, Ratri Widaningsi, she is a lecturer and researcher in uh, urban and regional planning in class 11 Maret Indonesia. And uh, also for our moderator, thank you very much, Ibu Dr. Paramita Rahayu, and all the committees uh, led by Ibu Lintang Suminar. Yeah? Thank you for uh, your uh, work hard uh, for uh, making this uh, international webinar possible. Ladies and gentlemen, from these webinars, we expect uh, so many uh, the excellence uh, and genuine ideas and even provocative ideas. So that, uh, uh, and also, uh, that can be from a speaker and also from participants. We are looking forward to uh, having you in uh, uh, our next uh, uh, works for our collaboration to preserve, uh, to preserve our water and to uh, uh, have a, a good management of our water. Last but not least, uh, with uh, saying Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, I declare that uh, this international webinar is officially open. Uh, I have, uh, I uh, thank you very much for joining, and uh, I hope you uh, have a, a great webinar. And uh, I wish you your experience and excellence and fruitful, uh, fruitful uh, discussion. Uh, thank you very much. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Over to you, Bu Lintang. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Solhina Sat, for the opening uh, speech and also opening this webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, the next agenda is the most weighted, that is the presentation session from the five amazing speakers. This session will be moderated by Dr. Paramita Rahayu, who are an associate professor and the head of regional planning laboratory in urban and regional planning program, faculty of engineering, Universitas 11 Maret. Dr. Paramita completed her undergraduate degree from Institute Technology Bandung, the master degree from the same university and also from the University of Groningen, and the doctoral degree from the University of Groningen in 2016. She is also active in publishing and conducting research by which her focus are mainly on urban development, governance, and also urbanization. So uh, Dr. Paramita, the time is yours to moderate this session. Thank you very much, Bu Lintang. Uh, I feel privileged to extend my warm welcome to all our audience and also our five distinguished speakers, Professor Yong Ping Wei, Dr. Frederick Bokert, Insinyur Eko Yunianto, Dr. Yudi Triana Dewi, and also Dr. Ratri Werdi Ningtas. Thank you for attending today's webinar, Socio-Hydrological Approach in Water Management. And our first distinguished speaker is Professor Yong Ping Wei. Uh, she is uh, currently head of uh, deputy of School of Earth and Environmental Science, the University of Queensland. She has over she has 12 years experiences after PhD on natural resources management in the University of Melbourne. For global ranking in Google citation, she is the third in socio hydrology, the second in water governance, and the 56th in water resources management. So she also won ARC postdoctoral fellow, uh, ARC future fellow, and she supervises 24 PhD and over 40 master students. She develops research collaboration with Austria, China, United Kingdom, Indonesia, India, the Netherlands, Sweden, and also the United States. Prof. Yong Ping Wei also won most effective teacher at University of Queensland and the first class teaching innovation award at Tsinghua through Melbourne Tsinghua joint course. That's an amazing uh, curriculum fitting. And without further ado, please welcome Professor Yong Ping Wei. She will share her expertise in social hydrological approach in water management. Welcome Professor Yong Ping Wei. The time is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Let me find my slides first. 
Then we can talk with my slides, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't find my slides, so. Sorry, I found my slidey desk at all, but I couldn't find it there, sorry. Sorry, just changing my computer today. If I, can you can I send? Can you talk first? Now I talk second. Then I fix my the computer because I changed my computer today. Computer dead. Sorry for that. So can I? If I can talk first, is that okay? Yes, I think. Yeah. I was really sorry because I don't know. I I saw my slides in my. That's in my screen, but I couldn't share with you guys. Let give me five minutes. I fix that. All right. Yeah. Yes, it will be okay. I'm uh, really sorry. Oh, Please yeah, take I, your time. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, Paramita, would you like to introduce me first, and then um, I'll I'll start talking after that. Yes. Sure. So. Uh, <laughs> We will go to our second speaker for today uh, because of the technical matters. Uh, our second distinguished uh, speaker is uh, Dr. Frederick Bokert. He holds a PhD on integrating refer basins, governance and management. He has more than two decades of uh, experience. Uh, sorry has two decades of experience in ecological field monitoring, analysis, and evaluation reservations. He was the director of Sustainable River Audits, the largest bio-monitoring program in the Murray-Darling Basin, Australia, 2010-2015. Uh, Dr. Bokert involved in SEI Asia to assist with research on water quality issues in the Chinswin Basin in Myanmar, and he developed a refer health framework to attribute environmental flow delivered and delivered under basin plan. And uh, Dr. Frederick Bocard will be investigating on managing interaction between biophysical and social system in uh, water management. Uh, welcome, Dr. Bocard. Uh, please, you can start the presentation. Thank you very much. I will first. Um find the file to share my screen. Can, can you see my slides? Yes. Okay, so basically, um, thank you for inviting me to this conference. I'm very honored to be part of this. And uh, the research that I have done, um, I, I think can contribute something to um, the precious management of uh, water governance in Indonesia as well. Um, I will explain why in a minute. So basically, um, my research topic for my PhD, which is what I'm talking about today, was um, around integrating river basin governance and management and comparing um, four river basins in Australia, Brazil, China and France. So why do we need to integrate river basin governance and management? In principle, um, integrated water resource management means governance through participatory approach, 
and stakeholder engagement. It means uh, adopting um, adaptive management where you're learning by doing. It means management at the basin or catchment scale, but also subsidiarity to address the local needs of uh, people. It means social, economic and environmental reporting. It means sharing the benefits and obligations of water use and also considering all water users, including the environment. However, the practical reality of integrated resource water management often um, doesn't work out like that always. There is still a very artificial divide between natural processes and policy processes and the co-evolutionary um, processes, um, so the interaction between both is often missing. There is still a mixture of competing paradigms that exist, but um, overall in many uh, basins, there is a legacy of um, command and control paradigm, which remains problematic. Um, the reason is um, because um, that is evolved from a very strong hydrological approach, engineering approach, and establishing infrastructure. This results in a very top-down approach and um, <clears throat> seems to ignore to some extent the system requirements and the local needs uh, of water users. A diagnostic framework using universal system indicators um, for governance and management to compare river basins is also lacking at the moment. And the function of a river basin organization with regard to co coordinating stakeholder participation and polycentric governance has also received uh, quite uh, little attention to date. So for good governance and stakeholder participation, um, some progress has been made recently, but there is still no universal agreement on what constitutes good governance and stakeholder participation. The OECD framework, which basically uh, was established in 2015, um, is adopted more and more, and they have three major components, effectiveness, efficiency, and trust and engagement. For each of those, they have uh, four different types of indicators that they want to use to assess good governance. On the other hand, stakeholder participation has been investigated as a ladder uh, going from the bottom rung, which is manipulation to therapy and, and gradually higher to informing, consultation, placation, partnership, delegated power and citizen control. So the, the, the lower uh, ranks, of the, ranks of the ladder really do not constitute participation at all. The middle ones are more like tokenism and the top ones are really degrees of citizen power where people get really engaged um, with, with decision makers. So my research objectives um, were basically, um, firstly, to develop a diagnostic framework to integrate river basin governance which is the social institutional capacity of a river basin and river basin management, which is the biophysical capacity. The second objective then was to demonstrate the use of the framework by stakeholders to diagnose their river basin and investigating its effectiveness to assess social institutional capacity. Why social institutional capacity? Because as I mentioned, there is still no universal agreement on what works best as indicators in that uh, domain. Whereas in the biophysical uh, domain, there is much greater uh, agreement about what, what are the right indicators to use. In the third objective then, I want to investigate social and biophysical um, indicator assessment and the interactions between those indicators, um, also for reaching targets and also how this contributes to enabling pathways for stakeholder engagement in reaching the target indicators. And finally, um, I want to compare the stakeholder assessments and enabling pathways for stakeholder engagement uh, between the four river basins that uh, case studies that I have studied. So the first objective then is my con conceptual framework that I constructed um, it basically consists of 
um, two major domains, the social institutional capacity and the biophysical capacity. And for each of those, there are four key indicators that correspond to four key functions. The first function to mention is connectivity. Connectivity in a river system translates into collaboration um, between stakeholders in the social institutional uh, uh, domain. And under collaboration, you find a whole range of attributes, which can be um, also tailor-made for the specific characteristics of that river basin. In the biophysical um, domain, um, it translates into river flows. River flows are what connects all everything in the system. The second um, function is structure. And structure basically corresponds in the social institutional domain to institutions. All the rules, regulations, um, organizations and institutions that humans have devised to basically manage uh, and govern the river systems uh, are part of this. In the biophysical realm, um, this constitutes the biodiversity and all the um, structural elements of, of uh, an ecosystem, ecosystem services and so on. The third function is direction and direction in the social institutional capacity translates into leadership, um, basically to um, aim for a particular sustainable uh, development goal uh, or, or a particular endpoint. Whereas in the biophysical capacity, this corresponds to water quality. That may not be uh, uh, immediately apparent, but water quality um, is something that can change um, from very good quality to very bad quality in rivers and lakes. And also um, water quality is part of erosional and depositional processes which uh, determine the channels of the rivers and basically uh, in that sense determine the direction as well. And finally, um, the function of uh, renewal translates into social institutional capacity into learning and in the biophysical um, domain into species reproduction, basically so that the system can keep continuing over time. So how did I use that framework? I basically used the framework um, to let the stakeholders themselves diagnose their river basin condition. First of all, I um, um, categorize stakeholders in 10 different stakeholder groups. Um, and then I asked them to basically um, use each of those 10, each of those eight indicators, I'm sorry, um, and ask them to rate it from very poor to very good. And I gave them a descript descriptive rubric, which you see on the right of the slide, um, with explanations for each of the indicators what it means when something is very poor or when something is moderate or when something is very good. So I asked them to, to um, do a rating of the current condition. And then I also asked them to do a rating of what is a reasonable target uh, condition for the end of the basin plan. So that um, you can start seeing um, what the current condition is, what the target condition is and how far away uh, each of those indicators are from target. I also asked them to um, look at how each of the indicators score um, in terms of influencing other indicators. So if there is a progress going from current to target for, for example, for collaboration, if you see in the bottom part of the slide here, um, what would be the influence of collaboration on institutions and on learning. And you can see here that that would be uh, assigned a number two, which is actually um, very synergist synergistic. Um, this, the rating scale here goes from, from two, which is um, synergistic. One is actually um, um, a little bit less. Zero is neutral. Minus one is actually uh, counteractive and minus two is, is stronger counteractive as well. So that basically gives, can allows you to map out where the synergies are between the different indicators. So I basically uh, looked at four case studies, the Murray-Darling Basin in Australia, um, 
the Sao Francisco River Basin in Brazil, the Yellow River Basin in China, and the Adur Garonne Basin in France. And each of those river basins are embedded within the governance provenance of the nation states, meaning they are not international river basins. They represent a significant economic resource for the country. They have a river basin organization or a basin committee, and they face unsustainable resource management issues, resulting in declining river health conditions. Their governance settings range from elected representation of actors to centralized hierarchical institutions across four continents. And also what's important is that for each of the basins, there are um, state borders or provincial borders within the country um, that provide, um, you know, governance challenges. And also each of the river basins is part of significant water resource management reform. I traveled in each of those basins and um, interviewed between 20 and 30 stakeholders in each basin from the upper, the middle and the lower parts of the basin as indicated in the travel um, uh, on the map of the slide. So the second objective then, uh, investigating the social institutional capacity indicators in the San Francisco River Basin. When I did this, um, I basically found that for the indicator institutions, what was really important for the stakeholders was clarifying roles and removing ambiguities. The leadership um, it was uh, overcoming the distrust and forming water pact agreements in collaboration, strengthening the agency of the river basin organization for better planning and for learning the knowledge transfer and capacity building. The diagrams you see here um, on top of the maps are basically the 10 stakeholder groups and um, for the RBO subsidiary, which are the government uh, officials not part of the river basin committee, you can see that they basically um, score um, institutions much higher than any of the other um, uh, indicators uh, for current and that's still the case also for um, uh, target indicators as well. So this basically gives you a picture of the difference between how different stakeholder groups rate each of those diagnostics. The th in the third objective, I looked at the indicator interaction between uh, river basins in the, between indicators in the Murray-Darling Basin. And what you see here are the social network diagrams that are constructed. And uh, what they actually mean is for each of the nodes, they are the indicators and the, the larger size of the nodes indicate that the difference between target and current is larger, which basically means that they are more difficult to reach um, because they're starting from a poor current condition and uh, have a long, longer way to travel. All the links between the indicators the thickness of the lines indicate the synergies between them. So the thicker the line, the, the stronger the, the uh, synergistic connection between indicators. What you see on the left, uh, upper left, is uh, a diagram for all of the stakeholders of the Murray-Darling Basin. And you can see that collaboration um, is a relatively small node. Um, that means it's easy to achieve and it connects very strongly to learning and also to leadership, which are much more challenging indicators to achieve. So from this, you can basically start um, devising enabling pathways for how you might strategize uh, reaching your indicators. The other important thing to note is the difference between different groups. You can see, for example, decision makers um, on the top right, the orange uh, diagram and irrigators, the green diagram, um, the top node there is um, basically leadership. And you can see that um, these nodes are very small, meaning that for those two groups, leadership is an easy target to reach. But if you go down and look at the other um, diagrams, for NGOs, for example, the yellow one below it, um, leadership is much larger and is seen as a much larger challenge. And that's also even the case for government officials, uh, below it and also for 
uh, river basin starve as well. Finally, the um, uh, bottom diagram for scientists is an illustration of how you can use these diagrams to create enabling pathways. You might want to start from the most challenging indicator. In the case for scientists, um, that is basically uh, learning and then um, decreasing in size, uh, look at the connection towards river flows, which is a little bit um, smaller in size, and then further to um, species reproduction, which is slightly smaller, but also in connection towards leadership. And you can see that um, using these diagrams, you can start prioritizing and uh, focusing on what is important for each of those uh, stakeholder groups to focus on in their role that they would play in a strategic plan for river basin management and governance. So the fourth objective then, the comparison of river basin uh, diagnostic profiles for the four river basins. What you see here is a diagram with the scores between target and current for each of the four river basins uh, for all the stakeholders collectively. And you can see here that for the Murray-Darling Basin, the outside um, um, profile looks very looks larger than the other ones. What that actually means is that for all of the indicators, the Murray-Darling Basin has a bigger challenges to reach the target than for, for the other river basins. <clears throat> what you can also see, for example, is that for species reproduction, biodiversity and river flows, the, um, the scores for the other three river basins <laughs> are relatively small compared to those of um, the um, social institutional indicators such as collaboration and learning in particular. So this basically um, collaboration uh, looks like a particular challenge for the Yellow River, the, which is the red profile. And so this basically allows you to distinguish between the different river basins, uh, what are the bigger challenges in each of those basins. And then um, what I'm showing you here now is the enabling pathways for each of the river basins. And um, what this represents is the, <clears throat> the priorities that I was talking about, which are color coded for each of the stakeholder groups and the thicker lines are basically the first priorities and the thinner lines are the second priorities. And you can see where some of those lines for different um, stakeholders start to converge. Um, in the Murray-Darling Basin, for example, a lot of the lines point towards river flows, which is where a lot of um, the objectives also focus on of the basin plan. In the, um, the other one, um, for the um, San Francisco River Basin, learning is a very important um, indicator, but that basically also flows towards water quality and river flows, um, where you can see that a lot of these arrows are coming together. In the Yellow River, learning, leadership, and collaboration are important uh, indicators, and they basically also point, of course, towards river flows but also some of the other um, biophysical indicators. And in the uh, Adur Garon Basin, leadership and learning um, and collaboration are really important indicators. In particular, leadership, which is deficient in, in that river basin because of the consensus model and the fact that they cannot agree very well in that river basin. Which leads me to the comparison uh, of governance. Yeah. Your, your time is about one minute more, uh, Dr. Bokert. Okay, I'll, um, I'll try and speed it up a little bit. So in the French Brazilian model, that's, uh, they have the same governance model. Um, there is basically a legislative requirement to appoint member stakeholder groups in the basin committee. Um, the committee's advisory has an agency to implement decisions and all the groups are being heard, but it's a poor performance model because the consensus model um, means that there is poor leadership very often and therefore sometimes it's um, dominated by lobby groups. In the Australian model, there is no uh, legislative requirement to consult with um, stakeholders, but with state jurisdictions instead. And they basically have to justify what they do 
based on ev evidence based on science. Whereas in the Chinese model is very, very top down. And basically um, the Yellow River Conservancy Commission is the one responsible for water allocation, but they have no enforcement powers and have to rely on the ministries. And there's a poor coordination with local government. Um, so the key findings of my research is that diagnostic profiles inform about the diversity of diagnostic views for further investigation. Um, there are enabling pathways uh, that uh, stakeholders can base for diagnostics and using a social learning process might, might create buying and diversification of implementing conservation and management, but that still has to be tested. So my contributions to knowledge are uh, basically that a diagnostic framework can use indicator dynamics for strategic planning, including anticipating feedback loops, synergies, and trade offs. It allows the stakeholders to independently diagnose their basin and provide multiple perspectives. Um, and it's a starting point for social learning, and it allows river basins to be compared as well. So, finally, the limitations and future directions. Um, basically, um there were some limitations in representativeness of stakeholders that needs to be expanded i think um and as i mentioned it's the start of a social learning process the concept can also be used in sub basins groundwater and estuarine systems and uh synergistic and trade-off interactions still need to be uh investigated more because that's poorly understood so basically the implications then are that um, enabling stakeholders requires greater power sharing from the decision makers, but also greater responsibilities from stakeholders. Competing interests and attitudes can be articulated through this diagnostic framework. And um, these universal indicators allow diagnosing any river basin, also in Indonesia. And uh, the basin diagnostics can incorporate existing basin plans and information, which is quite important. So in conclusion, then, um, the linear program logic that often uh, is used in implementation plans doesn't take into account system dynamics. So um, basically, this framework uh, complements that. And um, sh this should be um, and the traject. So this is basically uh, the major conclusion of it. So thank you very much for that. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Bokert, if, if I may uh, emphasize uh, several uh, important points. Maybe I could not uh, grasp it all, but I'm trying to just emphasize several, several important points. The first is your framework is very, very interesting, uh, used in social social institutional capacity with biophysical capacity, with key four functions, connectivity, structure, direction, and renewal that you translate into eight indicators, collaborations, institutional domain, leadership, learning, and uh, water quality, uh, and uh, biodiversity, species re reproductions, and all those indicators you apply to assess the problems of a different river basin in Brazil and China and also Australia. And by comparing those uh, three cases, we can identify the, the problems, the main problems of river basin management. And in the end, we can understand what kind of uh, governance model that can be applied to manage the, the river basin management with different uh, problems related to those eight indicators. Uh, maybe there are other more important points, uh, but maybe we let the uh, audience to maybe ask more to you in the Q&A. Uh, sessions. Thank sure. you very much for very Thank interesting you. presentation. Thank you very much, Rina. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, we will. We are going back to our uh, first uh, speaker, Professor uh, Yong Ping Wei. Uh, the time is yours now. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Can you yeah. please share my slides? Yeah. Then yeah, put a slide show. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, uh, firstly, thank you very much, all of your good effort for this webinar. I feel honored to attend this such a webinar. So being last 12 years, being always work at home to do my research. 
So I feel excited to talk whatever I can talk today. Firstly, I like reintroduce myself. So I started as an irrigation engineering, so engineer for many years ago. After that, I worked for government to do the water resource management. Then I came, came to Australia to do my research in the water resource management. So now I've got 12 years after my PhD. I have worked lots of research collaboration work through different development agencies. Like I work with Aussie, Aussie, World Bank, Asian Development Bank, ACAR, a variety of agencies. So my research is practice-driven research. So I like to take this opportunity if we, after we share the experience, we <clears throat> develop more collaboration research to solve the river basin issues. That should be the end of the uh, destination of our today's webinar. <clears throat> five, five years ago, I take the leadership in this school. I developed lots, lots of collaborations through different universities, probably over 20 universities in different countries. Again, probably that's uh, another opportunity we can work together to develop more research project. So I offer what I can do today. I'm uh, looking forward to more collaboration either through the water resource authorities or agencies or through your universities. Okay, so that's my feeling now. I'm really feel really honored to, to have the share my experience with you guys. I tell you, I um, uh, have lots of experience work with the different uh, river basin authorities and uh, different universities. If you think we share some, we have some common interesting, that's we work together. All right, like, let me start my talk today. So that my title is this title, it's Rachel gave me this title, sorry, it's called Integrated Water Resource Management. Is it only a concept, Nirvana concept? So next slide, please. So I'd like to talk a couple of things. One is what's the background? Second one is what should be taken into account when you do integrated water resource management? Then what's the current criticism? Lots of people don't like integrated water resource management. Why? Then I like share one of our recent research. What are solutions? Thanks. Next slide. Yes, I think uh, as uh, uh, as you, as everybody knows, we we have uh, global water challenges. I have lots of water issues globally. In, it's like water scarcity, flooding, droughts, groundwater depletion, soil erosion ecological degradation, climate change. So everything. Basically two, over two thirds of river basins are degraded globally. So that's a global challenge face us now. Next slide, please. So catchment is a logical management unit to do water resource management. So as the slides here show, Catchment include everything. It include natural resource like a forest, mountain, lakes, plants, animals, and as well as lots of man-made features such as farms, dams, irrigation schemes, industry towns. And don't forget, catchment include ourselves. Next slide, please. So to address these global water challenges, to manage the catchment, which have lots of different elements. Many, probably 50 years ago, we integrated water resource management has been, has been encouraged, proposed by lots of international organizations. The definition I give here is, big, which was be given global partnership in 2000. It's uh, the definition here is a process 
which promotes the coordinate the development and management of water, land, and our resources to achieve social economic welfare and environment sustainability. So that's the key things for integrated water resource management. Next slide, please. So what should be taken into account when you do an integrated water resource management? First thing is water balance. We have to know where what come from and where what go, who use what, how much what, what has been used and how much what has been stored in the catchment, in our lakes, in our soil, in ground, in our groundwater, in rivers. So I wouldn't give uh, too much, uh, introduce the equations. So first uh, thing we have to think about when you do integrate water resource management is what balance, where would come from, where would go, how much water has been stored in your catchment. Next slide, please. So once we got a clearly understanding or clearly accounting about water resource, we have to think of other resource too. You know, in this slide, left side is what balance. That's what I introduced in previous slides. So what balance is connected or integrated with the energy balance. So that's energy balance, then it Created, it's connected with the carbon ba budget too, also with energy budget. So when you do the integrated water resource management, you can think about the nutrient balance, what call it. So where nutrients come, where nutrients go, how that connect with water. You also can think about the carbon bu budget. That's our hot topic now. It's uh, it's the climate change. So where carbon come from, where carbon go, how that connect with water. So when you do the integrated water resource management, you think of energy budget, water budget, and a carbon budget. That's all well connected. So that's why the challenge of integrated water resource management at the river basin, all well connected. Thank you. Next slide, please. Then so, so then from the ecosystem perspective, that's the river basin uh, fingers. You, from upstream, middle stream, and downstream, you have lots of uh, ecosystem function to achieve through integrated water resource management. Normally from uh, upstreams, we look at the climate regulation and uh, what supply. In the middle stream, we try to look at uh, water food production, water quality, water treatment, and uh, other prime primary production. In the downstream, we normally look at what's the environment flow and what's the other uh, culture flows. So to management all these different ecosystem service, we need to have a very good integrated water resource management plan and even dam operation plan. Next slide, please. So what I talked before, what should be take into account as from biophysical perspective. So that should be well understood or well studied. So lots of research already has been done. How much, how we can do the water balance, how we can uh, integrate, uh, think of what balance with carbon ba uh, balance and energy balance, how we look at a different ecosystem service. That should be well studied now. From these slides, I try to emphasize the other part of integrated water resource management. So how that could be integrated in, so from social perspective, the, this slide here is who should be engaged in the water resource management. This is one of our collaboration projects in the catchment in Victoria, in Australia. In the small catchment, we did a lot of research as so many groups, so many different engagement uh, groups has been has been made ha, or has been engaged or make their influence in the catchment authorities, catchment amendments. So I wouldn't give the too much details about this. You can see, clearly see so many different groups which has been in, included uh, in, in, involved in the water resource management. 
So next slide, please. That's one of our research, another PhD student did a couple of years ago. So whose voice mattered in water resource management? So that's one of our projects we did. So we look at this uh, Sydney Morning Herald newspaper from 1943 to 2016, whose voice has, has mattered as influenced the integrated water resource management in Australia, you can see the blue one is government department. The green one is authorities. Even in Australia, the research of the stakeholders voice nearly nothing. You know, that surprised me. Anyway, so that's next slide, please. So the Another very important social factor is uh, the institutional arrangement, the law, regulation, and other info informal organizations uh, of governance. That's work which has been done by Ratri. Fantastic work through her four years PhD. He investigated all Victoria Acts 40, 489, Victoria Acts on land and water and environment to understand in different phases, which kind of uh, act has been involved in the integrated water resource management? How, how were they interactive? So it's fantastic work. I think Ratri will, will talk this later. So I'm proud of her research. Through four years research, he has fantastic findings in this area. Next slide, please. So technology is another very important part for, in, for the integrated water resource management. So because tech, technology can shape both the social economic welfare and environmental sustainability. That's one of my PhD students did, that's a Chinese case. It, she looked at over the last 8,000 years, which kind of technology, how they work together as a system to influence the integrated water resource management. I wouldn't give you too much details, just show you that's quite important for integrated water resource management. Uh, next slides, please. So look, so many things we have to, in, to take into account when you do integrated water resource management from biophysical science from loss, and from social science. We have this, this stuff, how, how these factors can be uh, integrated together. So, so far, we haven't to have a good approach. So that's why lots of criticism come from. I just copy, just a side couple of uh, uh, conclusions. Basically, integrated water resource management have received the limited su success across the world. So people start to doubt, should that's only a concept or academic interesting, wouldn't have any real application or real influence in the uh, catchment management or integrated water resource management. So I put the, our argument here is, our argument is the feeling of integrated water resource management is due to lack of the process-based understanding of the dynamic interaction between different uh, subsystems. So that's our argument. We don't have the process-based understanding. In other words, so lots of our social factors has not been quantified, cannot be integrated with the biophysical process both modeling, uh, modeling. So we couldn't have the process-based understanding. Next slide, please. Uh, okay, I just used one of our recent uh, project to, to demonstrate how we can do this process-based understanding. That's the uh, master work. So Paulina just finished uh, research. It, 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 she trying to understand, you know, in the integrated uh, catchment management, we have the major two functions. One is uh, 
what environment protection was means is uh, the other ones, what resource management. It's normally be management, be management different authorities like in Australia, China. So water resource allocation is managed by Minister of Water Resources. So what quality and what environment has been managed by uh, environment protection, Minister of Environment Protection. So that's, they have a very weak coordination. So, so what resource, what resource management to aim to, to achieve economic outcomes and ecological outcomes? What environment protection achieved to the better ecological outcomes? So that's hardly connected each other, coordinate each other. It's not only Australia, China, it's global issues. So we're trying to understand if we build some feed banks between their outcomes and the management authorities. So to uh, uncover these issues. So if uh, what environment protection management and water resource management, if they separately or weakly coordinated management, what would happen? So that's the conceptual model here. Next slide, please. Thank you. So Paulina is a, she used her hometown as examples. That's Maple River is in the central Chile as an example to investigate these issues. So Maple River is one of the hot, pot, uh, hot topic in integ integrated water resource management globally. So they have a lot of global agencies work there. So the major, major issues is they have a, a fragmentation of water related uh, agencies and uh, their water resource management and uh, water quality management never be coordinated together. Next slides, please. What we did here is, uh, like I said, we, do, we build the water balance model. So where what come from, who use, and how much water has been used by different uh, uses. That's, uh, we build the first water balance model. I think that's, uh, that's a fundamental step to do integrated water resource management. Now we build some economic model, what's agriculture outcome model, so how much water has been used by agriculture and what's their uh, benefit. When then we similarly we did the drinking water model and hydropower model. Later we have ecological outcome model. So if this much water has been used, how that has been affected by factor uh, affected uh, the ecological outcomes. Here, we just use the accumulated uh, numbers of mass as the ecological representative indicators. Then the last part is we look at the last 50 years, all the environmental legal regulation on water, say how much regulation has been made and what's their influence, influences and uh, what's the same about that? Then we quantify, quantify this legal regulation. Then later, we try to integrate this with the, our biophysical models. So next slide, please. So then we have a two hypothesis of this first feedback and the second feedback that I try to understand if this two agents didn't work together, what would be the outcomes? So I have the two equations. The first equation, I try to understand what's the relationship between environment regulation and the environment ecological outcomes. Second equations are trying to understand what the water resource allocation, what's the, what's the variables about the should be taken into account when doing the water resource allocation. So we look at the land area, look at uh, the population, we look at uh, the um, population, look at the water, how much water has been used, uh, what's the water available, what's the ecological outcomes and uh, what's the uh, uh, economic outcomes. 
Next slide, please. So we we'll have a, through this period, so this project, we have lots, lots of uh, uh, results. Here, I just show one part of the results. So left side, that's the uh, environment regulation results, how environment re regulation has been involved in the last 50 or, 50 or 30 years. In right side is how ecological outcome environment flow has been involved in the last 30 years. So if you have a left side fingers, right side fingers, you can build the equations between the equations between response of- Professor Yongbing, you have one minute. Uh, okay, I finished left, it yeah. one minute. Yeah, okay, thank you. So next slide, please, yeah. So let we build these two equations. These equations to tell how environment regulation to response to the ecological outcomes. Second curves is how water resource allocation response to, uh, to the economic outcomes and ecological outcomes and other populations here. Next slide, please. So with the successful simulation of these feed banks, that's very important to feed banks, allows us to understand how what environment protection and water resource allocation responded to the outcomes of the social, eco social ecological systems. To, that's to enable us to unfold the feedback mechanisms that's led to if ineffective and uncoordinated water governance resulting in the undesired outcomes. So this, this can, in this case is environment regulation didn't pre present a proactive response to, to the to ecological outcomes. So in the water resource allocation didn't have enough exercise to the ecological outcome. So this pro, this project, this approach could be used to integrate other social variables into traditional hydraulic models. So quantify social society variables and developing process based understanding of interaction between different systems is key for integrated water resource management because all integrated water resource management is process based actions. If we have a process-based understanding, we could this support its process-based actions. So quantify social society variables and developing process-based understanding need interdisciplinary collaboration and size policy links. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Yongping Wei. Uh, if I may try to uh, like a uh, uh, conclude several important points. Uh, your presentation is about uh, is water resources management uh, uh, possible or is, uh, is it a rhetoric? So you uh, point out that water resources management uh, is uh, a concept that uh, combine uh, social values, institutional arrangement related to regulations on land, water, environment, and also the role of technology as a system that influenced uh, integrated water resources management. But there are many criticisms about this concept, and you uh, provide, uh, suggest uh, solutions to this criticism of water resources management by using the combinations of water resource management and water quality management in a system of water allocations for economic outcomes and water allocations for uh, ecological outcomes. Yeah. Mm, thank you very much. This very interesting and elaborated the presentations. Uh, and now we will go to our uh, third speaker. I think uh, our third speaker will be uh, Dr. Uh, Yudi Triana Dewi. Uh, 
Uh, she uh, has bachelor degree from civil engineering Universitas 11 Maret, master degree in water resources management Universitas Gajah Mada and doctoral degree in water resources Universitas Nawijaya and she is currently the project manager of River and Coastal Bengawan Solo uh, River Authority and she involved in various project manager in Bengawan Solo and also involved in research many research funded by the university and the government. Uh, and I would like to welcome uh, our third speaker, Dr. Yudi Triana Dewi, that she will talk about the River Basin Management Challenge to Manage Biophysical and Social System Interactions with Case Study Bangawan Solo River. Uh, please, Bu Yudi. Baik, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum and gentlemen, Your Excellency, Bapak Profesor Solihin Asad, uh, Ibu Profesor Winnie Astuti, and distinguished speakers, uh, Profesor Yongping Wei, Dr. Frederick Bogert, and Bapak Eko Yunianto, and also Ibu Ratri Webinintias, PhD. This afternoon, I'm representing my uh, head of BBWS Pengawan Solo, uh, Bapak Dr. Agus. Uh, he is not available now because uh, he is in Jakarta uh, for some agenda. And excuse me, I can share my screen, please. Okay, uh, today I uh, will present water resources management in Bengawan Solo River Basin. Before I start my presentation today, uh, maybe I want to remind us, uh, our Minister of Public Works, Bapak uh, Basuki Hadi Mulyono, have five principles in appreciating water in daily life. First is recognizing and embracing the multiple values of water. Second is reconciliation and trust building. Third is protect water resources. And fourth is educate to empower. And five is invest and innovate. Uh, these five principles hopefully can be implemented in our river basin in Bengawan Solo. Okay. Uh, today, I divide my presentation into four parts. Introduction, Bengawan Solo Company's Profile, and BBWS Bengawan Solo's role in hydrosocial cycle, and Bengawan Solo River Basin Territory hydrosocial cycle, and the last is Water Resources Management Expectation. Okay. Introduction, opportunities and challenges in water resources management. Actually, we have opportunities in Indonesia right now. Uh, our demographic condition in Indonesia with an average productive age of 18 to 8 years. And the education, the education uh, is increasing. And the water resources there are abundant potential of water resources, groundwater and surface water, which have not been optimally utilized. And the fourth is technology. Technological, technological developments in processing and utilization efficiency. And our challenge, uh, actually there are four parts or four uh, challenges. First is, population increase, and land function transfer, and the third is over-exploitation of water resources, and the third is climate change. These four components causing three, two, first is too much, too much water, second is too little water, and the third is too dirty water. Unfortunately, there's still uh, two problems. First is 
behavior, there is a tendency to use zones around rivers, land use changes from forest areas to residential or industrial areas. And there is management crisis, there is sectoral ego, top-down approach, illegitimacy, which causes many management posts to be borne by government. Impact of utilizing activities, the ecological changes. Natural ecological changes results in floods and landslides. In water quality, decline, of, decline in raw water quality due to environmental pollution and morphology changes or degradation, refer bad subsidence, local scoring and others. And security of water resources infrastructure clean water and food security deficit. Second part, our profiles. Actually, BBW as Bengawan Solo have already exit for many years. And we are really concerned in our information technology. Uh, you can access uh, all about BBW as Bengawan Solo activities in our website. And uh, you can share all of your opinion in here and you can uh, giving us some suggestion or many uh, recommendation. Okay, Bengawan Solo River Basin Territory, based on Minister Legitimacy, number four, 2015, we have 96 water set spreading along the river basin. And Bengawan Solo River Basin have a 19 kilometer square. It is about 12% the area of Java Island. And the length of the main river is about 600 kilometers. And uh, the river basin divided into six sub basin. First is Bengawan Solo River Flow Region. Second is Bengawan Solo Upstream and Madiun Sub Basin, Bengawan Solo Downstream Sub Basin, Grindulu Lorok, Pantura River Basin, and uh, Lamong River Basin. There are two provinces. Uh, over the Bengawan Solo River Basin and seven regencies and three cities. Okay. BBWS Bengawan Solo carrying out water resources management in River Basin, implementation of construction, operation, maintenance, and monitoring. Two, first, water resources conservation. Second, water resources, water resources use. Third, water damage control. And fourth, water resources information system and community development. BBWS Bengawan Solo roles within the hydrosocial cycle uh, based on Linton 2015. There are three components of the hydrosocial cycle. There are physical component, social component, and also technology. Bengawan Solo River Basin have huge potential. Uh, right now, there are only 26.8 that are utilized. It is used for domestic, municipal, and industrial. The portion is 4.2%. For the irrigation, it is 22.49%. And for fishery, 0.1%. And 73.13 is unutilized. 39.8 being lost and 33.3 throwing into the sea. Uh, to reduct the unutilized water, we do some uh, efforts. For example, vegetative conservation. Second, 
is about uh, technical civil conservation. And the third is water resources utilization management to reduce water loss. In this year, 2021, we have 2.5 trillion. Uh, it is divided into many sectors. First, it's dam and lake. The construction of five dams ongoing right now and the rehabilitation of one dam, the construction of one reservoir and revitalizing one lake, irrigation and swamp sectors, rehabilitation of two dams, rehabilitation of improvement of irrigation, and in groundwater and raw water, increasing raw water capacity, and APSA. APSA is community of uh, rain harvesting in 12 location and field wells, 10 point. In water damage controlling, uh, we built 7.35 of flood control construction, such as levee, revetment, and others. And in operation and maintenance, we also have community-based infrastructure we call PDGA TKI in 550 locations and other support. Right now, there are five dams ongoing. The, the capacity of the total five dam is 78.48 million meter cubic. And for the Benefit in irrigation, there are about 17.58 hectares. And raw, met, raw water benefits, 1.4 meter cubic per second. Right now, BBWS Bengawan Solo have so many activities. Uh, there are 30 dam, 33 dam with total capacity 240 million meter cubic with the advantages is irrigation for raw water and also for micro hydropower plant. We have also 346 kilometers river embankment, 19 check dams and ground seals, 7.8 kilometer beach guards infrastructure. We have also 249 groundwater irrigation network. We also have flood forecaster uh, warning system. We have 64 rainfall station, 38 automatic water level recorder, and six climate station. And we have also 30 water quality station. And we also have uh, 52 equipment, heavy equipment unit, uh, for the emergency condition when flooding happens. And we have also 26 flood pumps spreading along the river basin. This is a documentation of our activities in a social cross-stakeholder. Uh, we have so many discussions with the local leader. Uh, and we always uh, have a good relationship uh, in making decisions. This is documentary for our uh, community works. Uh, we have Jo Kali B, Jo Jo Kali Bengawan Solo, uh, and we do some conservation and. There are so many activities uh, in Jawa Tengah and Jawa Timur, Central Java and East Java. And this is technology and social information. Uh, we have also uh, many kinds of uh, information channels. We have Bengawan TV, we have Twitter, we have Facebook, uh, we have Instagram, 
and everybody can access uh, the social media. Bengawan Solo River Basin Territory Hydrosocial Cycle. Uh, this is Bengawan Solo River Basin Territory Hydrosocial Cycle. We have three parts, physical, social, and also technology. And BBWS Bengawan Solo, right now, uh, have all uh, facility to support this, uh, this part, this components. Uh, in embracing the three components to gain our goal uh, to implement the integrated water resources management. Actually, there are four stakeholders in uh, Pengawan Solar River Basin. There are regulator, operator, developer, and uh, user or public. BBWS Bengawan Solo take action as operator, and uh, we have coordination team. It all the KPSDA, uh, Water Council in River Basin uh, of Bengawan Solo River. This is stakeholders mapping of Bengawan Solo River Basin territory. Uh, actually, we have. Uh, done all of this uh, concept, including the physical, social, and also technology. And last, we have some expectation. Uh, we give special roles to young generations to be active in sustainable water resources management activities, expressing opinions, and building criticism for the government, and use of renewable energy for the realization of the welfare of the people in a sustainable manner and the maximum benefit of the people. Don't leave tears, but leave a spring for our children and grandchildren. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Buyudi. Uh, interesting presentations about uh, the problems uh, of Bengawan Solo River uh, with too much, too little, too dirty, and also problem of behaviors, uh, land conversions, and management crisis. And uh, BBWS or Bengawan Solo River Authority uh, has applied a technical approach, a social and also a technology and social approach uh, with information system uh, to deal with all uh, the problems. And uh, also the program of emphasizing the role of uh, young generations to take part of this uh, reform uh, management. Thank you very much, uh, Buyudi. Uh, and now we go to our uh, fourth speaker, Bapak Insinyur Eko Yunianto. Bapak Eko Yunianto is currently head of public works Water Resources and Spatial Planning Department, Central Java Province, Indonesia. Uh, he receives bachelor degree from Civil Engineering, Universitas 11 Maret, and master degree also in Civil Engineering, Institute of Technology, Bandung. Uh, he has experienced more than 20 years in water resources and spatial planning in Central Java. He also participated in various training in Japan and the Netherlands about irrigation water resources, river basin management, integrated flood risk management, also low land drainage and coastal protection. Uh, I think uh, uh, Pa uh, Eko today will uh, share uh, his expertise in water uh, governance uh, with the case study of uh, Bengawan Solo, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, please, Pa Eko, the time is yours. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat sore, salam sejahtera untuk kita semua. Thank you for uh, the opportunity. Uh, first, I would like to send my regards to the distinguished speakers and the uh, program planning of Universities Black Marat that make that even possible and all the participants. I would like to present my present short presentation maybe. Yeah. Uh, uh, continuing to our topic, uh, government system in water resources management in Central Java. 
Well, what resources need to be managed? I think we should be uh, provide protection and guarantee the fulfillment of the people right of water, ensuring the sustainability of water availability and the water services to provide to affordable benefit and the community, ensuring the preservation of the function of water and water resources to support sustainable development, ensuring the creation of the legal, certainly for implementation of community participation in monitoring to the utility of water resources starting from planning, implementing, and collecting utilization. And then ensuring the protection of the improvement of the community, including indigenous people in their effort to conserve water and water resources. And the last one, controlling water demand of world which includes prevent mitigation and recovery of water. And basically from the because uh, my business in my uh, Dinas, Dinas Pujataru, that's on law number 23, uh, uh, 2014, concerning regional con uh, government affairs in the field of the public work and special planning consists of 11 sub affairs, including the following. Because you know that in the Central Java, divided by two institution, uh, number one and number two, what resources in central planning is our job. Uh, I mean, in the Department of Public Works of Water Resources, Special and Planning, and General. And uh, number three and uh, Epsilon, till 11, it's the uh, POP Namaka job. I want to say it like this uh, to spare it our uh, job creation. And then uh, a basis of uh, Article uh, Pasal Diga Diga, 23rd. Uh, basic on the uh, Undang Dasar 45, water resources are managed effectively, comprehensive, integrated, and incrementally minded to realize sustainable use of water resources for the greatest property of the all people of Indonesia. But how to uh, water resources management to uh, uh, run uh, uh, wastely? Should be there are water resources management in Institution, the formal. For example, from the central uh, government, we have the RBO, Pengan Solo RBO, represent from uh, public work uh, uh, department of uh, ministry, like that. And then the provincial, like uh, our uh, institution. And the, of, um, the Kabupaten or uh, city, we have DBUPR, uh, like that. And then uh, we, how to improve the uh, a performance of the uh, water resources management institution should be to back up by, uh, by water resources management coordinator forum. For example, in the center, we have the uh, uh, water resources uh, uh, council, national water resources council, and then TKP SDA, team coordinasi, I think, uh, the, before, before. Uh, Yes. And then we have Komisi Irigasi, Irrigation Commission uh, in Provinsi, also the, in Kabupaten City. And the three pillar uh, important thing is conservation of uh, water resources, utilization of water resources, and control of water damage. The, the three pillar will be uh, stand uh, exactly, we have uh, two foundation, uh, improvement and supervision, and the support by water reliability, water resource information system. Uh, and then water resources management policy, uh, next. The aspect, the first one is the water resources conservation consists of the protection and preservation of water resources. And the second one, water presentation, that fund, water quality management and water pollution control. And the second aspect, utilization of the resources, Water resource management provides provision of water resources, use the water resources, water resources development, water resources business. And then the third aspect, controlling the water damage power. Because if we, we don't able to how to the uh, water resource manage uh, 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 perfectly, uh, so uh, water damage will be uh, happen. 
and then consisted with sustainment mitigation, mitigation, prevention, and disaster management post disaster recovery. And uh, uh, to uh, another one, it's uh, I will uh, to say that the two foundation and as aspect four and aspect uh, the five as water resource information and empowerment and monitoring and supervision, I think. And then her basic from uh, Undang Undang 17 tahun 2019, so uh, about uh, water resources. Next, next. Uh, it uh, consists in independence, local wisdom, environmentally friendly, and conservation, integration, and harmony, transparency, accountability, sustainability, equilibrium, justice, affordability, and uh, general ability. I think it is concept from the uh, law number 17, uh, 2019. But no, till now, no uh, uh, government uh, regulation not yet uh, done or, or available. I think till now, till uh, this time. And how the government and water resources uh, separate uh, uh, about the job, job description or, or uh, Jawab, responsibility from the national government and provincial government and regency or city government. But the, the layer, the second layer, is from the how to manage the, uh, our irrigation and the, the first irrigation, how to manage the river basin. I think uh, in this, uh, 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 in the in the our law is like this, and then. Uh, in Central Java, we have uh, 10 uh, Ukal, uh, unity of the water set because uh, unity of the set is uh, compiling by many uh, water set because so many uh, water set in, in the mix, especially for, for Central Java, I think. Because uh, in Java Tengah, in Central Java, we have 202 uh, water set. Uh, we have then uh, unity of uh, uh, water set from the, for example, uh, we have Wilayah Sungai, uh, Wilayah Sungai Cimanak Sanggarung, Tomali Tomal, Putri Kuto, Ratun Seluna, Pisau Gelis, uh, Karimun Jawa Island, Pengawan Solo, and then Serayu uh, uh, Opa, uh, Toko Pak Terang, and Serayu Boko Wonto, and Kitandui. I think we have uh, Jawa Tengah, General Jawa, as uh, 10 uh, Ilai Sungai. Uh, and then how to coordinate water resources management in uh, Central Java? Coordination of water resources management, coordination in national level, I think uh, we have already talked about. And then coordination in provincial level, we have uh, eight uh, TKPSDR, yeah, coordination team, or water resources, uh, basically from the unity of uh, water set. We have uh, six because uh, Karimun Jawa and Wisot uh, Belis uh, is depend on the TPUPR, uh, uh, not so, tidak harus, not, apa, tidak harus terbentuk TKPSDA. Uh, kemudian, and then and coordination regency city level, we have GPUPR, I think it's uh, apa, mostly, uh, and coordination and reservation level. to so, integrating the interest of every sector, region, and stakeholder in the field of the water resources. And then coordination from the Gulan Solo River, I think it's uh, uh, the former uh, Speaker uh, already explained. I think I I, I want to continue the my uh, my next sit. Right? And then uh, pro, uh, profile and solar river basin is like that. I think also uh, my, my colleagues from uh, and solar river basin already uh, explained. I think I want to also to escape my uh, upper sit. And then how. Oh, Pengalaman solar river basin problem. I think water sediments and then water crisis drop because in during the dry season we have the too little uh, water in the uh, Pengalaman solar uh, river basin and the reservoir sediment 
kemudian flood disaster during the rainy season, and then pollution of the river during the drainage season because of so many production from uh, pollution, especially in Solo Raya, I think. And then uh, this overview for pollution of the Bengawan Solo was already the apa, uh, dimuat, ya, the, and then uh, dimuat di media massa to, to uh, issued in the mass media, uh, especially in the uh, up, uh, downstream in the Solo River part on uh, Central Java Authority. I, I mean in the segment of the Uh, Jawa Jawa Tengah atau Central Java Province, especially in the uh, Lura, ya. uh, we can see well, like the chapter like that. The pollution of Bungan Solo uh, record in the September until December 2019, I think. And then uh, next, how to uh, uh, to make the Action plan atau reform policy effort in the uh, uh, Jawa Tengah province atau uh, Central Jawa province. My government always uh, uh, give a thank, extra uh, extra uh, attention about for this one uh, because the river is uh, transboundary from uh, Jawa Tengah to East Java. So uh, my our governor uh, to respond this. Uh, Pak Ganjar, some uh, 15 commonites are the police in Bengawan Solo. And then uh, also uh, Bengawan Solo coalition uh, to Master Governor uh, give a deadline for firing uh, IPAL, eh, water treatment company, uh, apa, uh, should be uh, more better. And then follow up action and the river water pollution. I think it is the uh, uh, from the December until the July from 1916 uh, uh, until July 20, uh, 2020. Coordination meeting and access plan for handling population of the Pengawan Solar River and by government Central Java. And then meeting and preparation of action plan for handling population. So, Uh, source from UKM, Usaha Kecil Menengah, uh, Industri Kecil Menengah, and lah stop activity in Bengawan Solo, Watershed, at DLHK, Dinas uh, Environmental and Forestry Central Java Province, and then us also uh, in the next uh, step. And coordination meeting and plan for rationalization of water quality monitoring point and the Bengawan Solo River, Uh, in the Gedung uh, meeting in, uh, in our office in the Central Java. And then the following of the result of the coordination meeting of the rationalization of water quality monitoring point, the Bengal Solo River, in the form controlling data and the result of water quality monitoring by the environmental and forest office Central Java. And then focus with question, study of rationalization of water quality monitoring point, the Bengal Solo Uh, upstream water seed one of three until two. Uh, and, uh, and then pollution control, coordination meeting on the solar river and central Java province. Yeah. And then uh, uh, on the establishment of water quality management team and pollution control in the Bengawan Solo River in Central Java, represented by uh, per group, yeah. we had, I think, it's, before uh, this one is uh, already designed by uh, my co governor to build the team to establish a water quality management team. And then according on the Central Java Proven Regulation per 16 tahun 2019 uh, about the spatial planning, uh, we have protection area development policy, article H, Maintenance and realization of the sustainability of a uh, function and carrying capacity of the environment and preventing of the negative impact of the human activities at the, that can cause environmental damage. And then protected area development strategy determine of the protected area in the garden which is natural of the, uh, their protection. Adding vegetation, vegetation cover such as forest, 
at least 10% in the order to support the realization of till uh, 30% of the watershed area in the form the forest area. Present the occurrence of action that uh, does change the physical nature of the environmental that result in the environmental not function in spot sustainable development. And then controlling the wise use of natural resource ensure the interest of present and the future generation. Manage source power natural not renewable for utilization by wise and source people natural with renewable for ensuring community available goods, permanent maintenance increase uh, qualities so as well as the diversity. And then synergy effort to handle pollution Bengawan Solo. I think this is a uh, collaboration program and department or uh, semester and cross Indonesian and Regency uh, City. This is like in the, our cluster. Detail engineering, equilibrium in Kalianyar, Solo City, and Tofu at Tahu, BAT for Project Management, I think is uh, the uh, business of the UKM, the lesson is in. And trial of the CU, what is called CU? CU is a traditional uh, water, water treatment and technology, geographic system in generator, and coaching water, what's the word? Treatment for companies and cross integration on the river, the river, environmental, uh, small and medium enterprise, and in the relation, uh, SBN, I think it's in the Ketakarya uh, description, and the design, revitalization of Bate, because you know the Soloraya is all of uh, Suron, it's uh, so many uh, Bate production from it, I think. And then uh, province, water quality monitoring, coaching business actual, and evaluation of the performance of the last industry box was last time. Pak Eko, you have four minutes remaining. Okay, thank you. And then uh, Regensin City, one of uh, the subdivision uh, at the, it, it is like Scott, the AJ, water waste management interaction in Platen and Boyalali Regensin. And about this, I want to like to direct you to the government and management solar repair. Uh, next one. Okay. I think I'll uh, also explain the uh, formal speaker. I want to, uh, the last uh, seed, my, my seed, minding and the growing water move together. The last one was. Yes. This is uh, my point for us. This important thing: how to make to collaboration and integration and synchronize synergy for management water resources in Central Java. And this my point. The main, uh, the strongly mentioned is how to uh, uh, to endorse Penta Helicom collaboration between academic and business and then a community and a government from Central Province. Uh, district and city, and uh, how to share to the public uh, by media. I think this uh, uh, short our presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Paiko. Uh, very interesting presentation about uh, the governance of uh, water resources uh, management in Indonesia. That has uh, actually five aspects, uh, conservation, utilization, uh, cultural water damage, uh, water information system, and also empowerment and monitoring. And as you mentioned, uh, we differentiate uh, the coordinations of water uh, management in Indonesia at the national level, uh, river basin level, and then provincial and uh, regency and city level. We also have uh, very complicated problems of uh, water pollution in addition to water set damage uh, and also drought, sedimentation, and also flooding problems. And in the last uh, conclusions, uh, you mentioned that we have a pentahelix 
collaboration strategy for water resources management in Indonesia that uh, integrating academics, uh, business, community, governments, and also the media uh, to taking care of uh, our water resources. Thank you, Pak Eko, for very interesting and informative presentations. Sorry, I mute myself. Uh, now we will go to our last presenter, uh, Bu Ratri uh, Werdining Tias, uh, PhD. Bu Ratri is uh, our lecturer and researcher at Urban and Regional Planning uh, Program, Faculty of Engineering, Universitas 11 Maret. She received a bachelor degree in Urban and Regional Planning from Universitas Diponegoro. Master degree also in urban and regional planning from Institute of Technology Bandung, and her doctoral degree is in infrastructure engineering, the University of Melbourne. Uh, she also uh, received a diploma in public policy from Maastricht University, the Netherlands. Uh, diploma in environmental management from uh, uh, Sipu International, AB Sweden, and she involved in various research funded by the university, government, and also NGO. And now uh, she will uh, present about uh, the framework of social ecological system uh, to assess governance, social ecological system framework to assess governance system. Uh, the time is yours, Murati. Uh, uh, let me share my uh, presentation. Uh, is that okay now? Yes. Um, okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon for Indonesia and good evening for uh, Australia and maybe other participants from other country. I can mention it's my pleasure to you here. Uh, from the precious uh, presenter, we got uh, already wonderful knowledge that uh, stressing that uh, in water management, uh, we cannot only think about uh, technical consideration, but we we'll also need to think about the social sector, which uh, now, nowadays, we also... Uh, 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 our um, most challenge uh, is not uh, managing the water, but actually managing uh, the community or managing the actor behavior in dealing with water resource. So uh, in, in, uh, in the country like Indonesia, uh, water management has uh, become a big issue since in some area, the notion of uh, availability is asymmetric with the accessibility. Uh, water scarcity when comparing the resource to demand is more relative than absolute. So for the closing presentation, I want to bring another perspective, uh, but also stressing about the importance of a social uh, system when we are the, uh, dealing with a uh, uh, biophysical system, in this case, uh, water resource. I call uh, my presentation is water management in social ecological system perspective. Okay, as we know, uh, water. Uh, as we know, water uh, system exemplify high integrated social ecological system because they depend on both water process, but also how human deal, utilize, and manage the water. In the Anthropocene era, now, like now, where uh, nature doesn't have, uh, again, its capacity to resolve uh, negative impact of human intervention. Uh, so we really need to be very careful in water management how we depend. Uh, plan, develop, distribute, and manage the water to gain uh, optimum use as, uh, without uh, threatening uh, future generation. So if we can fast back to the last few decades, there is have some dramatic change in concept in water management. Water management has evolved from the status of minor, mainly ad hoc activity to become mainland or continuous process. So it's not only building a dam and expand the water infrastructure and that's the end, but 
we need to make sure how uh, that is will work and uh, can benefit the uh, public as is tar uh, targeted. So here we cannot only think technical stuff, but we need to consider also economic, environmental, and social factor, and also uh, as much as we can improve the public so that it can be succeed. As a consequence, uh, in terms of actor, like we uh, also learned from a previous presenter, that uh, nowadays in water management, we don't only need engineers to take over the technical stuff, but we need to embrace many different uh, disciplines and the public in the same time. While the amount of water is fixed and we have increasing uh, demand and pressure from uh, growing population and also economic activity. So nowadays we cannot think water again as a commodity, but is a key ingredient in our economic and social policy. And also we can see today there is also shifting. People are starting to think the importance of uh, uh, to do water conservation instead of think only water supply and its utilization. As a highly integrated uh, social ecology system, uh, talking about water uh, in water management is really attributed to a single problem, but it's related to many problems which is connected to each other, also like uh, already explained from the previous uh, uh, presenter. For example, in the term of water seed, flood, drop, is have relation with our catchment condition. It's not, we can just not blame that it's become a climate change. Uh, uh, it's caused by climate change, something like that. So when we are talking about water management, so we actually uh, talking about how many complex interconnected problems that can occur in the same time, I call it simultaneous uh, problem. For example, here, when we experience drought, there will be, of course, a biodiversity loss. And as there is no enough water for the environmental flow or problem that create downstream problem, uh, and on the whole of the system, I call it snowball uh, problem. For example, here is the climate change. It creates a uh, erratic rain population, and because of that, it treats uh, people water security. When people feel insecure about the water, they pe uh, people tends to do action to save the uh, interest, uh, which. Uh, then led to the social conflict and also environmental degradation. And that at the end, destroy a whole system and make us farther from what we are dream of about sustainable water resource system. So in water management, we try not only to cope uh, with many existing problems, which are correlated to uh, each other, but it's also to minimize uh, uh, negative impact that could happen in the future because our incapacity to solve the current problem. Talking about government intervention, actually we can say that it's ranging from the concept uh, to policy instrument, let's see. Government approach actually is about the arrangement of the policy across different level of uh, government. And where every uh, policy is always formulated based on problem and objective with a range of policy instrument and the policy instrument itself are the technique of the government to implement their policy to uh, practice. So watching and even experiencing how government in adapting and surviving from uh, various uh, problems related to the water, we also familiar with 100 approach like uh, already maybe also some speaker also explained uh, approach of government to try to do like we can see in the figure here from the concept, like they want to adapt into uh, IWRM, Arifor Basin, catchment management, try to uh, empower the community and also adaptive government and so on. And also they also try to implement many policy instruments like a, a plan, permit, user tests uh, and rules. So, and uh, we are agree that here that water related problem and social and other informal degradation happen is linked with the failure of this approach we, cho uh, we choose. So the only thing that uh, the way we took up uh, with this problem is by improving our capacity in water management, that is the capacity of uh, us to choose which approach of concept need to be adopted, uh, how to formulate the policy and how to set the instrument. As so many participants here is coming from uh, many government agency, if you are asked to drive a land from uh, which government intervention you will choose to solve a problem is in the left side, we will understand that there will be a big possibility of various line direction. 
For example, to manage a uh, social conflict in water distribution, some people will think license permit use of charge is the best solution to make uh, sure everyone get what they afford. But some other will say we cannot take the charge or make difficult to uh, people to access water because water is human right. So we need to uh, we cannot take a charge for this. So here the the government will choose how they will deal and manage water. Uh, based on their perspective, knowledge, capacity, and of course, of the context specific condition of their own region. This is also uh, happened to other uh, problem related to water. There will be more than one alternative for people uh, to choose. So, uh, so there is no so actually there is no general prescription how water needs to be conducted as condition which water management is a place very context uh, context specific within the region. In a number of cases, change in government intervention has resulted uh, in considerably uh, negative impact. Uh, instead of promotion of the social condition as is targeted. So we actually cannot just duplicate other government intervention for solution because there is no guarantee that intervention through a policy uh, instrument which can success in other country or other region will lead similar success to uh, also uh, to our, our region. In deciding which intervention, actually water management is human learning process. We learn from our experience and improve ourselves to deal with water. So water management and experience is instructive, and it's not a linear a linear process because uh, 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 with permanent solution because uh, the change is of uh, in surrounding is very uh, uh, dynamic. So to improve our capacity to be better. We need to understand how good and bad our intervention are now. Uh, are we good enough? Uh, or actually, we don't know that we are good or bad. So the challenging problem here is how to understand that where we are, we are good or we are bad or we are good. Oh, Atri, five minutes remaining. Oh, my God. <laughs> so uh, we just over said that we are in grade five or ten, something like that. So. Uh, Sorry, I said that. So there is in the literature, there is a, a four a common uh, global issue in uh, social uh, ecosystem system government is also in the water uh, resource uh, government that I explained the interconnected and also the government system is a uh, slow mode uh, when stability and change wants to be together and very difficult to understand uh, in short term work and also the inter intervention given by the government usually is like behind and uh, political amnesia that uh, it's very rare that a government uh, uh, makes uh, learn from the history they are the tendency of the government to concern on the existing problem instead of learning how the problem occurred because of the previous action. So the main problem here is uh, we don't know, understand, uh, we don't understand how the condition has been signed by the government system and how the government system in turn has been shaped by the, uh, the condition in the practice. And that is a very big problem. And the development of social ecological system framework in the last three decades have been motivated to understand that. So proposed by Ostrom, uh, the social uh, the framework is very useful framework to elaborate our condition in managing uh, social ecological system uh, maybe because of the time I need to skip that uh, uh, that actually this uh, the 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 framework is uh, very powerful and already used by many scholar in across the world to this this create a uh, environmental issue it then identify problem and risk conclusion about uh, the social ecological system condition. When we talk about the social legal system, for example, we want to elaborate the condition of our Western system. Actually, we will not think about one resource. We also not think about one resource, use, uh, resource user. There are many resource users, and we are not thinking about 
uh, one public authority who responsible to water. So water governments actually try to manage uh, how the interaction between resource with, uh, among the resource user and also how uh, authority with resource user and also among the authorities itself. So it also happened to other uh, resource. So here, in the Ostrom framework, uh, the government system is treated by ex, uh, exogenous uh, variable here outside. The framework doesn't uh, consider the rule of government in directing uh, the interaction, hundreds of interaction that can happen uh, because the dynamic interaction between a social ecological component. So here, uh, we put a government system and energy system by put a policy instrument policy instrument, there is two kind of policy instrument that is substantive policy instrument and procedural uh, policies instrument. And both of these uh, policy instrument actually try to manage the interaction between resource, resource user and public infrastructure provider. So uh, we propose <coughs> for tire, uh, uh, for, we propose a, uh, we pro uh, try to propose a four tier uh, uh, framework that is uh, try to make a general about the interaction uh, about component of social uh, social system actually is managed uh, or regulated by policy instrument. We have applied uh, that framework to. Uh, analyze the policy instrument used in uh, Victoria government uh, from 1860 uh, until 2016. And, uh, sorry. and we found that actually uh, the policy instrument used by Victoria government is not uh, very from the uh, 18th century until uh, 19th century, but they changed in their capacity to manage the interaction of component of ecological system. And there is a four regime we can identify that uh, first is a uh, reserve regime uh, from 1860 uh, till 1900. That at the time policy instrument used to manage interaction was directed by the resource condition. The second one uh, in the authority regime is policy instrument used to manage uh, interaction directed by the government concern. And the third one is by information, uh, by physical information. And the latest one from Victoria, the, uh, the importance of the coordination between uh, integrated uh, biophysical and social system, they are represented in the policy uh, instrument. So here, uh, we already agree that water management is actually exemplar highly integrated interplay between biophysical system and human social system. And we also agree that problem happened because the incapability of the policy instrument applied. But to understand which one is good, a bad policy instrument is very challenging work. From the framework I have explained before, we can see actually the government system is the accumulation of substantive or uh, procedural policy instrument in managing interaction between when component uh, social ecological system. So understanding the government system can be despaired by explaining the implementation of the policy instrument. Examining the uh, policy instrument is mean we need to understand uh, the capacity of our uh, policy instrument to respond to complex interaction uh, among components within a social ecological system. By doing that, by understanding that, it will be helpful for the government to formulate intervention in water management because actually for improving, government need to improve the capacity of the policy instrument to reconcile the threat of, among the component biophysical and social system. Instead of trying to find the best, uh, uh, try a famous uh, policy instrument that is a success in other country then adopt it uh, to achieve their particular goal. I think that uh, I can, uh, explain for today's presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, time I give back to Ms. Mita. Mita. Yeah, Bu Ratri, thank you very much for very uh, interesting presentations. Uh, we didn't pass the time limit. <laughs> little bit. Okay. <laughs> so we discuss about a complex interconnected problem, right? Uh, so water management is about complex interconnected problems and the governance system. To understand uh, how good we are, so we have to 
uh, understand the policy instrument applied over time in the refurbished area. So uh, we could uh, apply the best uh, policy instrument for uh, certain refurbishing with its problem. Yeah. So we have to put attention about the complex interco interconnected problems, the governance system, how good we are, and through the policy instrument, understanding policy instrument over time, we can understand what uh, are best to apply to the certain refurbation problems or water management problems. Thank you very much, Bu Ratri. Now I think uh, that's the last uh, presenter. Then we will go to Q and A session. I think, and let me uh, see the uh, several questions that we received here uh, through the G four. The the first uh, questions uh, is addressed to uh, Doctor Frederick Bukert. Is about. Uh, in what extent the role of community can be defined to improve the social institutional capacity. Please, pro, uh, Dr. Bukert, you can uh, answer the question. Thank you for that question. Um, it's an important question, I think, because <clears throat> the role of community, I think, is very important <clears throat> in two respects. <clears throat> One is the, the, in a general sense, that the community needs to be able to agree um, on how the policy is being developed and how a basin plan is being uh, developed and implemented in, general, in a general sense. But the community that lives in the river basin in particular, I think they need to um, also have a voice um, in, in this whole planning process, in the sense that um, they are also affected by some of those decisions. Uh, they are water users. They basically, if, if suddenly there is a decision made to build a dam, for example, to um, have more water storage, it might mean that some people get uh, displaced from where they are living. It might mean that um, they might not be displaced, but they're homes might be in danger because they are situated downstream of a dam. So it's important to listen to all the voices of, of the community. And um, in fact, the um, members um, of a community living in a basin was one of my categories in, in my analysis. So um, I think they need to be consulted and uh, their voice needs to be taken into account in the planning process. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Dr. Bukert. And the second question is for Professor Yong Ping Wei. Uh, since social is such an intangible substance, what is your idea to measure the social aspect to be engaged with water resources management? Thank you. That's really, really important question. It's really, really challenging question to address. You know, what means social? Engagement is social. Technology is social. Policy is social. And our value is social. Our opinion is social. So traditionally, in the last 100 years, social science takes a very quantitative research to tell What's your opinion? You good or bad? How good you are, like Ratri said. But I think in this transformation generation, we live in the digital learning era. We need to digitize quantity for all our social aspects, policy, technology, opinion, and engagement. So so that's what my what I have done. My group has done last ten years, try to quantify all social aspects, enable them to be integrated in the traditional biophysical model, which has been developed by our um, quantitative social uh, scientist, hydrologist, hydrologist sister, or other modelings. So 
the ways we do, we, we do we integrate social science methodology and uh, the tax mining approach to integrate a quantitative approach and a qualitative approach to make the quantitative qualitative contents to be expressed in the quantitative way to enable the so, traditional social aspects or variables to be quantified to integrate it in the process based understanding. Thank you. Probably too much, but well, welcome any any time you have any questions you have my email then talk to me i'm very excited to explain how social aspects can be quantified thank you thank you very much uh, professor uh, our third question is for um, bu yud uh, in water management concept in order to do good water management we should at least know about input and output in water cycle. But in Bengawan Solo, we are lacking in those items. We don't have comprehensive data about the input and output in water cycle. What I would like to know is that in that conditions, what we should, what we should do to improve water management. Okay, thank you very much uh, for the question. Uh, we try to answer uh, both the input and the output, especially for uh, our discussion today. Uh, we want to uh, highlight it also about the social, maybe uh, this social aspect, like what uh, we discussed with Professor Yongping and uh, Dr. Bogert. Uh, right now, we have water councils that embracing all the voices from stakeholders, from many regencies, uh, spreading along the Mengawan Solo. Uh, but we are not yet quantified the social as aspect, like uh, what Professor Yong Ping Wei, maybe this is our homework, Ibu Paramita. And uh, for next time, we have to be more concerned about this uh, social aspect, I think. That's our answer, Ibu Paramita. Yeah, thank you, Buyudi. And uh, more questions will be for, uh, another question will be for Pak Eko. How to synchronize the management of Bengawan Solo River by uh, Pusdataru uh, and uh, BBWS in overcoming settlements on the uh, river uh, area that often interfere with the run, smooth running of the river. Okay, thank you. Uh, I will try to uh, answer, but uh, maybe it's a short uh, answer. Uh, you know, because uh, Bengawan Solo uh, River Basin is the authority from the central government. So if the local government and then uh, district or city government have activity about the water uh, resources management, so the uh, uh, coordination and then we have to uh, permission from the authority. So uh, what we have to do uh, in line with uh, uh, what the uh, BBS uh, will done in the next. I think it's the, the key point is like that, uh, especially for water resources in uh, uh, Pengawan Solo River. I think it's this one, uh, except we have uh, the mechanism for the most red bank like that. This is uh, should be done. But the, uh, uh, about the water resource management, we have to in line with the uh, uh, BBS because one of the authority is in the uh, central uh, uh, government. I think this this one. Okay, thank you, Pak Eko. And for Bu Ratri, uh, there are many water-related problems in Indonesia, such as floods, droughts, lack of adequate water storage, and so on. 
uh, and they they cause threats to water availability and sustainability, and cause problems to water quality. And those problems are mainly caused by human activities. The question is how to manage the issues of water problems caused by humans themselves. What kind of policies or punishments can make individuals not pollute uh, rivers or build houses on river banks? And how to take effective steps to invite all levels of society to manage water to be more efficient because of the availability of clean water has started to become scarce of climate change. Yeah, for this, Buratri. Okay. Uh, as uh, what I learned from Victoria, I just short card uh, from Island Victoria. For the first, uh, they didn't integrate. So, like the, in the first regime, actually, when they manage the water, the consideration is also the water availability. License or every rule uh, uh, is granted, actually, or it will be granted if the there is a water availability and the second one is like maybe a little bit from like our government line the uh, our government now like uh, the government concern is become a uh, uh, drive drive the policy instrument for example like what government wants so the policy instrument or the intervention is directed to uh, support the government concern something like that but the good the best thing at uh, the third regime actually is also trying we are trying is actually uh, we need to base our decision make uh, decision making based on our understanding about the biophysical system. So for example, we cannot just give a grant without understanding how much water actually we have. Even uh, <laughs> you do say we don't have that that integrated data. So we how we know that uh, our 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 uh, intervention or when we give a grant or a, a license, it will not uh, harm the uh, the environment, something like that. And the latest from the Victoria regime, Victoria regime, actually they try to coordinate all the action, all the action here. Uh, like you say, there is water pollution. There are many uh, uh, problem with the flood, drop, uh, and every and in Indonesia also, there are many government agency like try to cope with. Uh, uh, try to cope with that incremental uh, problem, but actually they are not incremental. Like I said before, they are interconnected. But sometimes the, uh, the government see they are incremental, so they don't try to interconnect uh, their decision maker, uh, the decision making, and not supported by integrated uh, data. So that's make the decision is uh, incremental. Then it make uh, like in the third uh, regime of the Victoria, like. Yeah, they're based on their biophysical condition, but they are uh, still inconsistent between authority uh, of uh, among authority because they have different perspective, they have different interests, uh, they have different background. For example, like uh, now uh, in Indonesia, there are many uh, what is that mushroom about groundwater exploitation, and actually the. For environmental agency, they said no, it harmed the environmental. But if the I'm sorry to say that agriculture uh, agency say that I need to uh, like I have target about how much paddy I need to uh, produce, so I will give a help for the farmer to build the groundwater or uh, try to dig a uh, wheel, for example. So there is in, in synchronized uh, decision because. Uh, there is no one decision making process, and we don't have actually integrated data. That's maybe my answer, Bu Paramita. Hopefully, it's answered the question. I don't know who's the answer. Uh, Thank you very much, Muratri. Mm -hmm. And we back to uh, to Dr. Bokert. Uh, another question for you is that: Is your framework uh, applicable to every places or river basins? Because, uh, or is it for certain types of rivers only? Or uh, because uh, in Indonesia, there are some types of rivers. Uh, some rivers have multi-functions, not only for water flow or source water sources, but also for 
tourism, socio-economic and even culture? Is it applicable to every type of river basin? Yes, thank you for that question. Um, I, I deliberately designed a framework to be applicable uh, across many different types of river basins. Um, that's also allowed me to do the comparison between river basins in four different continents um, and in different situations. It is definitely applicable also in Indonesia. Um, the eight indicators of my framework basically allow you to um, assign different attributes for each indicator. So if, for example, there is uh, water flows or, or river flows, you can, under, under that indicator, you can put in um, uses of tourism, you can put in uses of hydropower, all sorts of different things that are relevant and applicable to that river basin. And so the river base, the, the framework can be designed to actually um, assess the river basin with its typical characteristics, its river flows and its conditions um, and, and its um, social institutional capacity conditions as well. So yes, the answer is it can be used um, for any river basin. Thank you, Dr. Bukot. So it's applicable to any river basin, yeah? Another yeah. question, more question for Professor Yong Ping Wei. Uh, <laughs> yes. In the research about the resilience of socio-hydrological system in Chitarum River Basin is in West Java province, Indonesia, conducted by uh, our institutions. Uh, we used social capital. In, at the society level, value, beliefs, norms, and pro-environmental behavior at individual level to measure uh, the Human Resources Adaptive Capacity Index. Do you have any opinion regarding the use of this method, society level and individual uh, level? That's my expertise, feel excited. Anyway, so, so uh, because the social capital, you know, opinion, opinion value, that's a social capital. So certainly that has to be quantified. Otherwise you never can measure resilience of your social ecological system. That's the first thing. The second statement is, if you want to quantify the social capital, have many ways. In society level, you have some ways in the group level, group behavior, some of the ways and individual level have some ways. And in terms of different data source, you have a different ways. If you got something from your questionnaire, that's different method. If you some from, from media, you know, newspaper as other ways. If you something from the census, you put a census in the shopping market, you put a census in some ways, that's a different ways. So certainly we have different ways to quantify social capital. And we have ways to integrate that to the water balance model. Fantastic, one of our guest lectures put, the, put your catchment water balance model there, it's fantastic. We, that's my daily work. So we have many ways to do that, but unfortunately, I can't tell, tell you detail for different methods, different data sources and the different levels, but uh, very happy and open to any questions. And we will set up another room session. I can tell ways I do, or I can send a reference. Our group already published to this question. Certainly it depends on which is your data source and uh, which level, society level, group level, and individual level, and uh, which kind of uh, uh, ways you do. So certainly answer is yes, but I couldn't tell you very detailed what I have done. But I show you some examples that our group, our students have done. 
one slide is one PhD student four years work. So I just show what I showed you before, but we have many, many other ways to do. Certainly I'm more than happy to share what we have done. Sorry, couldn't give you the one simple answer, but I can show, send you our publications. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Professor Yongfi. And uh, we have more questions uh, for you and also Dr. Bukert. The yeah. question is from Pak Bambang Widianto. Uh, could you tell us or share the experiences, an like example of collaboration between river management institutions and residents in rural and urban area in, in Australia or other places? Uh, the river management office tends to be hierarchical, while some communities from the river banks are individual and some are egalitarian. So how to uh, build collaborations uh, and what the example of your case? Thank you. Is this a question uh, for both of us or is yes, it for me? Yes, for both of you. All right. Um, Yongping, do you want to start or? Yeah, you can start. I would think it's not. A... Yeah, anyway, <laughs> you start first, please. Okay. Um, my, I think I have to talk from my experience working in the Murray Darling Basin in Australia because I have a long career in working with them um, before I did my PhD. Um, Basically, I think there has always been um, a bit of a tension between um, top-down and, and bottom-up um, collaboration between different organizations. In Australia, we had a period where there was um, a lot of um, bottom-up information from um, catchment management authorities. They were basically um, at, a, at a very... Um, small scale level, um, tackling the problems of, of localized uh, people, of localized farmers, of uh, small rural communities. And at that moment, they were basically looking at um, providing more sustainable collaboration for land and water management. And it was funded by the federal government, not so much by the states. Um, that worked quite well, but then the focus narrowed specifically onto water and not so much land management, sustainable land management. And when the basin plan came into effect, these catchment management authorities were no longer consulted by the federal government, which is very unfortunate because then um, when they did a top-down approach for the basin plan, they realized that you need collaboration from the local levels as well. And some of the stakeholders there um, were protesting against the basin plan saying it di didn't uh, consult with us. It didn't take into account what are our needs and so on. And so then suddenly they had to start consulting a lot with uh, stakeholders, but um, they didn't go back to the catchment management authorities. They went to talk to the people who were protesting a lot and not necessarily the other ones. So I think the, the planning and coordination of stakeholder engagement in the Murray-Darling Basin um, has been a little bit ad hoc and not very effective always, especially since the Basin Plan uh, has been implemented. They have been trying to be more systematic about it, but I think they are still not, they're still ignoring a large part of the local communities. Right, so my experience and the perspective now i don't have experience from the federal government to state government or catchment authority so i'd like to share my experience at the river basin scale the catchment scale i think uh, the most important for the collaboration between different uh, stakeholders upstream middle summer downstream is uh, i think it's a social learning process social learning or not just sharing process is very important from the planning, implementation, policy impl implementation, monitoring, evaluation. So the social learning process is really important. So one of the best uh, 
examples in Australia we already done very good is the catchment uh, Goldman Brock catchment authority. Later I can share you some uh, experiences they have done is they use social learning as a tool from the beginning of the planning until the evaluation, the whole the planning or the practice. So social learning is a very important tool for catchment authority to use to engage all stakeholders in different step of the water resource management. Okay, thank you, Professor Yampi. And that is the last question for our Q&A sessions. And I would like to thank all the distinguished speakers for all the presentations and all the answers and the discussions. And uh, I think I will close this, this session and back to moderator Bu Lintang Suminan. Thank you very much for all of you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you uh, very much, Dr. Paramita, for moderating this session very well. That was such a fruitful discussion. And I also would like to thank all the speakers here for delivering the materials of the presentations that are very insightful for all the participants. And thank you for the participants who already submitted the questions. We apologize that we cannot accommodate all the questions here, but we try our best to send the response to you by email as soon as possible. So and um, before we wrap up today's event, let's do the photo session first. So all the participants, please kindly turn your camera on. Once again, to all the participants, please turn your camera on because we're going to have the photo session. Well, there are nine pages here. Get ready, page one, one, two, three. Page two, one, two, three. Page three, one, two, three. Page four, one, two, three. Page five, one, two, three. Page six. One, two, three. Page seven. One, two, three. And the last page. One, two, three. Well, thank you all and, and yeah, I'm sorry if it takes too long. <laughs> okay, and once again, uh, I would like to remind to all the participants to fill the attendance form in the link that is already shared by the committee. The committee will send your certificates and also the materials of today's webinar based upon your attendance record within a week after this event through email for all the participants in this Zoom meeting and also the participants in YouTube live, YouTube live streaming. I would also uh, like to thank once again to all the speakers here, Professor Yong Ping Wei, Dr. Frederick Booker, 
Bapak Eko Yunianto, Ibu Yudi Triana Dewi, and also Dr. Ratri Wurdi Mintias, and also Dr. Paramita as our moderator today. On behalf of the team, I'd like to thank you all for joining and participating in this webinar, Socio-Hydrological Approach in Water Management. I'm Tintang Suminar signing off. Stay safe and stay healthy, and see you again in the next event. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good evening, Yong Ping, Frederick. It's too late, already too late in Australia. Thank you, Professor Yong Ping. Thank you, Pak Agus. Frederick. Terima kasih, Ibu Paramita. Ibu Patri. Sama-sama, Pak. Terima kasih. Terima kasih, Pak Tekan. Pak Yulianto. Pak Yulianto, terima kasih semuanya. Bu hmm. uh, Kaprodi ya, sukses semuanya. Ya. Cara yang sangat bagus. Oke, terima kasih. Terima kasih. Sehat selalu semuanya. Terima kasih. Amin. Terima kasih Pak Tekan. Ya, ya Bu Musumastuti ya. <laughs> Sehat semuanya. Assalamualaikum. Amin. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam. <laughs> Izin live ya Bu Ratri. Terima kasih Bu Mita. Sama-sama Bu. Sama. selalu. Bye. Terima kasih Bapak Eko. Iya Bu. Ini terus. Eh Bu Yudi. Semoga bisa ketemu lagi. Close. I think we can uh, close the uh, stop the recording. Pak Eko. Ya. Terima kasih. Pak Eko matur nuwun Pak Eko. Ya, matur nuwun sami-sami Bu Ratri. Pak Eko. Terima kasih. Ya. Ya, salam untuk civitas akademi UNS. Hari mana Pak Hari Pak? Itu Pak Hari ada lo di depan saya. Mas Sakti, Mas Hari, Mas Tiga ada. Habibah di situ lo Pak Bu Bu Prof ini ya Habibah. Oh ya. Ya. Oh ya. PUPR. Oh ya. Ya Bu. Apa pengadaan baru lah. Tempat Mas apa Mas? Mas Hari ada. Jakarta ya, yang Jakarta ya sebetulnya ya di Jakarta aja. Oh, di, ya, di Jakarta, Taru yang di Jakarta. Di Semarang, Bu. Oh, di Semarang. Oh, ya, di, 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 di. di instansi kami di bidang uh, penataan ruang. Oh, Tapi begitu. Di, di, oh, di pemanfaatan, uh, no, di seksinya, seksi pemanfaatan uh, tata ruang. Oh, oh ya, Alhamdulillah. Okay. 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 Tip, nanti oh, <laughs> okay. bisa bro. berkembang. Bu, <laughs> masih cuti. Masih cuti. Melahirkan ya, seperti habis. Ya, masih bersalin. Uh, <laughs> tidak melahirkan ya, bersalin. Oh, J. Mudah-mudahan nanti adik-adik kelasnya bisa. Oh, siap. 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 Mungkin nah, bisa praktek atau bekerja seperti itu. Di Provinsi Jawa Tengah, PU-nya dari WNS semua. Bina Marga. Oh, begitu, J. Iya. Jadi, Habis ini pusda taruhnya Pak. Menawi, menawi Pak Sakra Nagara. Kok jaringan nih Bu? Tahu loh. Cipta karya sepertinya. Cipta karya aja. Cipta karya itu Mas Arif Bu. Tapi angkatan kakak kelas kami 82. Arif. Arif Rio. Oh, oh dia Pak Arif. Oh, ya, ya. Sama Bu. Kalau yang di kota itu dari arsitek Bu. Siapa mas? Sitar eh, Sitar Sitar Resmi. Ya. Oh, dia yang di Solo, dia. Eh, sekretarisnya dari 
arsitek juga Mas Arif itu dari Delanggu. Iya. Oh, oke. Cukup banyak. Pak Arif pernah ketemu juga. Sudah diundang ke sana. Ini tiap uh, hari Rabu kan ada wedangan rutin. Uh, gitu. ya. Wedangan ikam nih kan, Ji? Iya. Oke. Kita juga ada diundang tapi belum pernah mengikuti. Yeah. Oke, itu seru juga tuh banyak. Oke. Ya, oke. Oke. Udah lama nggak ke kampus saya. Oke. Eh. Oke. Aturan pinara. Iya, Bu. Seluruh nih. Maturun, maturun. Maturun, Bu. Ratri. Pak. Nanti saya nggak ganggu-ganggu lagi ya, Pak. Terus siap. Dan senang hati ini ada Mas Hadi, ada Mas Sakti, beres, Bu. Iya, nanti saya puter, Pak. Gantian, Pak. Siap. Ya, ya. Biar agak kurus, Bu. Ya, harus di... Ya, gerak ya, Pak, ya, dan lembur. Ya, gerak. Suruh lari Semarang, Solo. Kembalang kentingan, suruh lari PP. Oke, oke. Thank you very much for all the participants. Kalau bahasa Inggris tuh, ah, tuh. Masya Allah. Masih banyak yang belum leave out. Maybe, host, we can close... Uh, Terima kasih juga ini untuk adik-adik mahasiswa semuanya ya. Terima kasih. Ya, Mata Alif, Rosida, Sapa, Sabrina. Dari semangat adik-adik kita. Ya, memotivasi adik-adik. Ya. <laughs> ya, itu buat bikin apa ya? TA ya, Bu ya. Tadi jawabannya hmm, enak banget. Bisa untuk TA itu. Iya. <laughs> Betul <laughs> sekali. Ya. Uh, Oke, okay. maybe host Alif, uh, Alif ya, eh, sorry, hostnya Alif ya, we can stop. Terima kasih semuanya Pak Eko, Bapak Ibu. Terima kasih.